going back to Big Foot 8, whenever you guys tested it the first time, what were each of your impressions of the truck compared to, you know, the entire industry prior to that? Did you drive the fir it first or the end? I drove, no. I drove 8, almost a whole year we tested. Did all the okay. testing on it, was all the testing was done, I handed it over the end. Okay. And I'm going to back you up on Andy's story about on the line. Mm -hmm. He didn't fall asleep. Andy Brass never fell asleep in the line. He, on the line. He was good. But what happened was we had an ear pocket and a fuel injector okay. and a motor got poof. He caught me. Okay. He got, <laughs> it kind of sputtered. And all Sorry, of a sudden, Andy. It, all of a sudden, the <laughs> lights went crazy. It, you know, it regained its prime yeah. and it took off. And he shot past this guy, you know, and everybody's going, they were sandbagging. Yeah. And that's when, you know, it, he did a good job. We, we knew we had a better truck back to number eight trying it out. I mean, that was a, it was totally new concept. Yeah. I mean, there's off-road trucks out there, and, and, you know, we went to the off-road truck field to get ideas to yeah. build an yeah. off-road monster truck. Yeah. yeah, so we borrowed from them, and uh, just like we borrowed from the drag racers with the big motors, we borrowed from everybody, everybody you yes. know. Yep. And... Uh, the only thing is, it took a whole year to get it usable. I mean, yeah. it really did. We started off with a with a, a 460 stock engine with a four barrel on it. And no sway bars on it. No sway bars. We just started just to get it to drive. Damn it, horsepower on. We just yeah. wanted to be able to run it all day. Yeah. So we made a lot of shock changes. The shocks were just a nightmare. Uh, taking a, a little off-road shock and blowing this thing up and making it bigger and different velocities and different weights to work with. I mean, it's just, finally we got the shocks and then put the sway bar. I remember, first time we assembled the truck with the shocks, I climbed up on the side of it and the truck went. Yep. Just compressed like that, no sway bar. sway bar, yeah. He said, yeah, we're gonna we need. figured the gas shocks, when I'm thinking with putting it together, you know, the gas shocks, the same pressure, they should hold it in the center, but they, they didn't. Yeah, they bleed over. Okay. It's not like a coil over, yeah. it holds it, but, um, that being said, we put a swear on the front. Yeah. Um, then it didn't take very long, we had to put a swear on the back yeah. because in the back end you had so much oversteer on it. Yeah. Uh, so then we had to put a sway bar in the back to correct that. And get out there and jump in the thing. And I mean, I remember I was busting my butt trying to jump six cars with the old trucks. Mm -hmm. You know, and here we are with number eight when we got it close to being right, jumping 100 feet, boom, jump down, come back, do it again, jump 100 yeah. feet. Well, man, that's twice as far as you said. I remember the old trucks going full speed, first, second, third gear, wah, boom. Yeah. They didn't fly very long, no. they were so heavy. But uh, we knew we had a, a really good truck uh, in that respect. It was, um, it was fast, it was, it, was, it was kind of a predictable truck, yeah. uh, the way it was set up. Uh, I remember when I, Andy came in the town, because Andy was on the road doing all the California stuff when I was back here. Yeah. So he was out, he was kind of the lead man doing all that stuff. And he comes back, we're getting ready to get in the truck, because Andy, don't worry about this truck, he's asking me all kinds of questions. I said, don't worry, you can't hardly even roll it over. You know, First it, thing he did was what? <laughs> he went out, over. <laughs> give some gas and turn that thing and roll it over. I thought you told me you could roll it over. <laughs> I don't remember telling him he couldn't roll it over, but... I guess maybe I didn't tell him it was predictable because when you went in the corner and that old front tire come up, you know, you know, you could kind of put it back down. You could take play that front tire all the way around the corner. You can't just, you know, it would tell you it was going to roll over. Yeah. We're getting off a subject. Are we? Should we answer more questions? Well, oh, I mean, talking's great. Um, I guess we can go to you. You know, back in the '80s, how important was Ford's involvement to the overall success? Oh man, hundred percent. Wow. What can you say? Well, we made no money with what promoters paid us because we we busted so much stuff that money went right back into it. We had to have a sponsor to help with the other part of it, and Ford was was the key one for the time. Ford, Firestone, Summit, you know, all that. But uh, Ford was great to, to move into the industry. It, it made us feel feel better that we had a corporate sponsor. Um, Opened up a lot of doors. Yes, it did. Really yes, did. Yes, it did. And, it, and it, it helped move the whole monster truck industry up a class to where they might start talking to about monster trucks being a motorsport rather than just a, a joke. But anyway, with Ford, um, first of all, 
we're out there running, we're kind of introducing the world to monster trucks. You know, we're running fleet six, seven trucks all over the country. Uh, people never seen a monster truck, so we're kind of introducing the country to a concept. And Ford kind of saw that. Ford came to one of our shows, and three fourths of the vehicles on the parking lot were pickups. Yeah. And they, came, they put the connection together there, you know, and uh, so the big blue Ford came out. And we went run with Ford, but they opened up a lot of doors. We had a lot of commercials with them. I mean, I think we did three different TV commercials with them. I can remember doing at least three yeah. um, in different events. Um, yeah. well, I remember crushing two pickups for Edsel Ford, yeah. you know, in Detroit. But it was, it gave them, uh, you know, they were promoting Ford Tough back then. Yeah. And we were an aspect of that. Yeah. yeah. Actually, the person that got us in the door with Ford was Edsel Ford. I met him at a SEMA, SEMA show. And probably the next winter, we did a show in Pontiac Silverdome, and he was there. And uh, I says, "You want to ride with me? Well, I, I take the flag, and we've got a, a, a kid there that was in a um, what do they make the last request? Uh, oh, uh, make a wish. Make a wish foundation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the kid was in the middle, and Ansel was on one side, and I was on the other. We drove out and did the, the, in the introduction to their the, the flag and and drove back off and we're taking the kid out. They said, that's all, you want to ride over the cars with me? He says, sure. He gets back in there and we kind of drove over the cars very easily back then. You just crawl up on top, wave to the crowd and drove off. And, and he says, I'll talk to a few people at Ford and see what they can't do, you know. And he and I had a good relationship because, you know, I'd say something to him. He says, Bob, you know, I don't work for Ford. I says, Etzel, you're a member of the board. And when you say something, people jump. And he just laughs. <laughs> nice guy. Uh, so kind of going back to, you know, early days until now, uh, what is the most memorable fan interaction that you guys have ever had? My, my reaction more than anything else was with the kids. And I can remember doing a show where I, I lost a race, and afterwards you, you walk to the side barriers in the hockey arena type thing, and you're, you're signing autographs, and the kid's there, and he's crying, and he's crying. He says, what's wrong? He's, Bigfoot lost, he goes, <laughs> oh my God, you know, I says, everybody's got to lose. I'm trying to explain to him that what, it, what it is, but the, that that bothered me. So uh, something else that had been great with kids is we've had several people with handicaps that have been our, uh, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. have been our, what do you call them? Uh, uh, Took part in their business, basically. Yeah, yeah. basically did. They're, they're, and they just eat, sleep, and, and talk monster trucks you know all the time and uh, and that that kind of turned because it gives them something else to work for i took one of the guys he was in he was always in a wheelchair and i brought all kinds of video equipment to his house and set it up where he could sit there and edit monster truck stuff and, and give him something to do and it was it was great you know the guy he ended up turning putting out some good videos i believe that was shane rose yeah shane rose yes mm -hmm. and how about you for um i mean i don't know there's so many good fan reactions. Yes. I'll go back to one where I had a fan reaction with 50,000 people. And I was doing the Pontiac Silverdome and I was racing. And I did a couple rounds and I come back the second round and I come back and we talked to my crew guy, it was Gene or somebody, and I'm not sure it was Gene Patterson maybe. I said, Gene, something's wrong with the truck, I hear this noise. He goes, he checks it over as he always did. And he checks over and says, man, I think you're good to go. And I go out and I make a run you know, halfway through the run and having to glance at the people. And people were just yelling and screaming. I was hearing the people over the top of the engine <laughs> through my padded helmet. I was hearing the cry of 50,000 people over the engine. I, oh my God. I had, I'm just after kind of doing a job, doing my thing in this little circle down here, not thinking, you know, all these people were just yeah. that in tune to what was going on. And man, that really hit me. It's a holy miracle. I can't believe that many people. I got a side story about got so excited about about him in Pontiac Silverdome. He did his show, and it was all might have been the same show you're talking about. And show's over, and, and people are gone, and we're taking the truck out. Pontiac Silverdome got a very long ramp going from the state the floor up to the parking area. It's a two stage ramp, and he's putting around going heading up there and I'm behind it so I grab the, the uh, pedal hook on the back and put my feet on the axle I'm hanging on to it 
and he does a burnout. I probably left my fingerprints in that pillow hook on the back of it hanging on. He had no idea I was there. I had no idea. Either. No. Anyway, sorry, we got off the subject. No, no, you're good. Um, as far as fan reaction, the fans are so loyal, and, and yes. we're at the event Saturday, and there's people there, you know, I'm 70, there's people there 55, 60 years old, and they're just Bigfoot fans. Yes. And they've been fans all their life. Yeah. And, I, you know, they thought, man, it's so good to see, I always wanted to meet you, and I always thanked them for being a fan all those years. How long have you been? Oh, I've been following you since I was this big. <laughs> yes. And it's like, wow. Yeah. It was, made me feel really good. Yeah, you know, like the guy that comes up to you and says, yeah, he says, I met you 40 years ago. Don't you remember me? I says, no. Yeah. <laughs>